Hi and welcome to Shorts in Psychology. Today we're going to talk about the four levels of explanation which are used to explain behaviour in psychology. These four levels are used to examine why people behave in certain ways in certain situations. They consider both the internal and external reasons for behaviour. While we can examine behaviour on these four distinct levels, all of those levels are actually integrated. So this means that they're all working together at the same time. Let's look at the first level. The first level is the biological level, and this is biological and chemical processes underlying behaviour, and these processes are common to all people. For example, brain activity and brain structures. So these are things that may be influenced by substances that have been consumed, such as alcohol or caffeine, as well as our level of arousal or alertness, which can be impacted by sleep. Neurotransmitters, including adrenaline, which is part of the fight or flight response, and other neurotransmitters such as serotonin and dopamine, which influence our mood, or GABA and acetylcholine, which influence how aroused we are. Hormones and physiological responses, including heart rate, blood pressure, breathing rate, and sweating. The second level of explanation is the basic processes level. So this is psychological processes underlying behaviour, which are still common to all people like the biological level is. This includes cognition, which is our thinking and memory, as well as emotions and learning. There are many different types of learning, which we'll examine later in the year, and all of these types of learning fit under the basic processes level. The third level of explanation is the person level, which is individual differences between people. People have different levels of self-esteem. They have different levels of motivation, better problem solving skills. Some people are more resilient than others. All of these characteristics fit under the person level. Other examples of things you can discuss under the person level include intelligence and education, including problem solving skills, their personality. So this includes all three conceptions that we will look at in the year 12 course, including the psychodynamic, humanistic and trait conceptions, as well as someone's personal experience. This is something else that will influence their behavior. Motivation and self-esteem are two others that fit under the person level that I've already mentioned. The socio-cultural level is how other people and the cultural context influence and shape behaviour. So for example, this could be people who are present at the time that the behaviour occurs, but it could also be family and friends. So it could be things like peer pressure, social dynamics, how someone has been brought up, their religious beliefs, their ethnic background, and you can also look at some age and gender issues under the socio-cultural level, in particular stereotypes. Now that we've gone through each of the four levels of explanation, let's see how we go at applying them to a scenario. Harry is a conscientious student who is keen to do well at school. He is highly organised, completing all assignments and homework tasks before the deadline. Although he achieves high marks in all of his subjects, Harry experiences high levels of anxiety during tests and exams and often suffers from panic attacks at school. He does not like to ask questions in class or see teachers for help because he doesn't want to appear stupid, fearing ridicule or being asked to demonstrate things he doesn't know. Using the prompting questions on the side, think about how you could explain Harry's behaviour using each of the four levels. Pause the video while you write down some of your ideas. Okay, let's go through each of the four levels together and explain Harry's behaviour. So if we start with the biological level, which is where we're looking at biological and chemical factors that are at play here, there's a number of clues in the scenario that can give us an idea of some of the physiological processes that Harry is experiencing. So the scenario tells us that Harry experiences high levels of anxiety and that he often suffers from panic attacks. So during these panic episodes, he would be experiencing the fight or flight response, which is activated by the neurotransmitter adrenaline. So some of the physiological responses in the fight or flight that Harry might be experiencing include an increase in heart rate, rapid and shallow breathing, he could be feeling sweaty, he could have an upset stomach, he could feel quite lightheaded. 
If we look at the basic processes level, we could ask ourselves, well, what is he worried about? What is he thinking? So again, there's some clues here in the scenario to give us some ideas. So we're told that he's keen to do well. So that means potentially Harry is having thoughts along the lines of performance anxiety. Uh, perhaps he is thinking about his future after school and so that's causing him to worry about his performance and his grades. The other thing that we're told is that he doesn't want to appear stupid and that he fears ridicule. These also fit under the basic processes because again, we have a thought process here. He's thinking about appearing stupid and we have emotion, he's fearing ridicule. The other thing that fits under the basic processes level that we could discuss here is Harry learning from past experience. So it could be that he's asked questions in class previously and perhaps he has been ridiculed or a teacher's put him on the spot and asked him to demonstrate something or answer a question he hasn't had the answer. And so as a result of this past learning, Harry no longer asks questions in class. If we look at the person level, we need to ask ourselves, well, how would we describe Harry as a person? So again, the scenario identifies some of Harry's traits or characteristics that relate to his personality. So first of all, we're told that Harry is a conscientious student and that he's highly organized. So as a result of these traits, he's completing his assignments and homework tasks before the deadline and he's achieving high marks in all of his subjects. We can also tie his anxiety in with his personality characteristics because a personality trait called neuroticism relates to emotional stability and anxiety. So the fact that Harry is experiencing a lot of anxiety, we could say that he is high in the trait of neuroticism. The other thing that relates to his personality is that he doesn't like to ask questions in class. So perhaps Harry is an introvert, which means he doesn't like being the centre of attention and he prefers his own company to that of others. Lastly, if we look at the socio-cultural level, we need to ask ourselves, well, what social environment is Harry in? So here, the main parts that are relevant from the scenario is the last bit talking about being in class and seeing teachers for help. So obviously, Harry is very conscious of his peers. He's trying to manage the impression that he makes towards others, which is why he prefers not to speak in class. Hopefully applying the four levels to the Harry's scenario has really helped clarify for you exactly what you can discuss under each of those four levels. And that's really important because as you can see in this table here, the four levels of explanation feature very strongly in the year 12 course. Most of the topics in the year 12 course focus on one level of explanation. So for example, psychobiology of altered states of awareness uses the biological level of explanation so this is a topic where we look at stages of sleep and sleep disorders, as well as different states of awareness, including stress and jet lag. The learning topic uses the basic processes level of explanation, as this is the topic where we look at different learning processes, such as classical and operant conditioning. Personality topic focuses on the person level of explanation as we look at three different types of conceptions or approaches to defining and explaining personality. Social cognition focuses at the socio-cultural level of explanation and this is a topic where we look at attitudes, how they're formed, the functions that they serve, how we can change attitudes, as well as things like impression formation and impression management. The last topic, Healthy Minds, integrates all four levels of explanation. So on this topic, we look at things like risk factors for mental illness, protective factors, resilience, anxiety and depression, and explaining some of the symptoms as well as some of the coping strategies using all four levels of explanation. So this is something that we'll continue to practice throughout the year, but hopefully this introduction has started to get you familiar and comfortable with each of those four levels.